You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Queen Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you another Let's Play episode of Dawn Course Devon's Path. So the last time we left off, we went to Rune's room. We've been hanging out with him, and that's about it. So let's see where this leads. Will Devon peek his head into the room to see what's up with his friend? Who knows? I've never been down this path before. Let's see how it goes, shall we? <clears throat> also, I hope you all had a wonderful Labor Day. <clears throat> all right, let's do it. Let's get into character. <clears throat> okay. I plan my time ahead and keep a schedule, and I don't allow myself to slack off. That's impressive and all, but I hope you don't push yourself too hard. I don't want to see you collapse from exhaustion. Don't worry, I'm a sturdy deer. This isn't that much, really, and I enjoy what I'm doing. If I wasn't, I probably wouldn't find the motivation. I'm not entirely convinced, but there isn't much more I can do for him now, is there? Okay, let's say I believe you. Could you play one of your songs for me? If you really want to hear one, but I can assure you that they're nothing special. Maybe even a bit embarrassing. Everybody has to start somewhere. I don't expect you to play me a multi-part masterpiece here. Okay. I'm not used to playing for others, though, so I'll, so I'll for sure mess something up. He picks up the guitar and hops onto the desk, resting it on his leg, and strums the strings gently with his thumb, playing a mellow chord. I currently have not tuned to an alternate tuning I came up with. I have only one song written in that tuning, but I like the sound, so I'll probably work on more. Ah, uh, but you probably don't want... Don't know what the alternate tunings are, yeah? Hell, you probably don't even know what the standard tuning is. Not really. <sighs> okay, it's not really important. Guitar is a pretty weird tuning because the strings are tuned five semitones apart, except for the fifth string, that's four semitones higher than the fourth one. A semi. <clears throat> sorry. I was reading the wrong voice. A semitone is the distance and pitch between two adjacent keys on a piano. I think that's the easiest way to put it. That tuning is called standard tuning, and it's what pretty much every guitarist uses. Alternate tuning is anything other than that, and they're usually constructed in such a way that all open strings together form a specific chord. You can get some more interesting, unusual sounds from that, and they're often easier to play in once you get a good grasp on them. I always like it when others gush about their interests. It's really sweet in a way. I can feel their excitement about stuff I have no knowledge of. It always makes me want to explore the topic deeper and get into it. I guess that passion can be contagious. I tried writing some songs of them with varying degrees of success. I've got all chords laid down for that one, but I'm still working on the melodies. Rune strums the strings again, this time pressing some of the strings to the fretboard with his left paw. The chords sound sweeter and more joyful than the previous one. I move closer to him, sitting on the edge of the bed, and observe him play. He plays rather quietly and timidly at first, but after the first few chords, I can hear that he regains his usual confidence. Suddenly I hear a loud twang and something sharp hits my face. Oh shit. Ow! I press my paw against my cheek, feeling a stinging sensation there. Ah, Finn! Garvin, are you alright? Rune drops the guitar in panic, leaning in and looking at me with worry. Looking at the instrument, I can see that one of the strings snapped and is now dangling limply. I think so, it just stings a little. Wait, show me. He grabs my paw and gently pulls it from my face, looking for a wound. He presses his thumb to my cheek and brushes through the fur gently, observing me closely. Damn, you got a pretty awful cut. Carvin, I'm so sorry. Wait here just a moment, I'll be right back. Rune gives me a quick head pat and, turn and runs out the room. <sighs> now you gotta wear a mask, you'd be the Phantom of the Opera. I wonder how often this happens. I had no idea playing the guitar can be this dangerous. It frightens me a bit, but now that I know what happened, it doesn't even hurt much. It frightened me a bit. For a moment, I think about picking up the guitar and take a better look at it. But I stopped myself when I realized that another string might snap too. I wonder where Ru I wonder where did Rune go? He looked pretty worried. I hope he didn't panic because of a small scratch. I stand up to look at the mirror there at the entrance to my room and look at my reflection. There's a small stream of blood trickling down my cheek. Oh! I sit back on the bed heavily and raise my paw to the cup, feeling the wetness under my paw pads. The sight of blood always makes me a bit queasy. 
Okay, I'm back. Rune hurries into the room, holding something in his paw. He sits down on the floor in front of me and op opens the small bottle he is holding. It's hydrogen peroxide. The cut doesn't look that bad, but there was some blood and strings aren't exactly the cleanest thing ever. Aren't you ever reacting a little? Definitely not. You don't want to get an infection. Now lean back and don't move. Not wanting to argue, I do as he says, raising my head and looking at the ceiling. He brushes the fur on my cheek with his thumb again to have better access to the wound. <sighs> his touch is gentle, making me shiver lightly. He cleans the wound with hydrogen peroxide and a tissue skillfully. Being an athlete, he probably had his share of, his share of cuts and bruises himself, so that comes at no surprise. It stings a bit, and I hiss when hydrogen peroxide comes in contact with the wound, but keeps still. From up close, his scent is much stronger. He smells really nice. The cologne he's wearing mixes with his natural scent, woody and inviting, with a hint of jasmine and some blueberries. That's probably from the blueberries he actually ate. If someone this morning would tell me that I'd end up in his room talking with him casually, I'd laugh at them. And yet here I am, talking about our hobbies, listening to him play his songs, and now with him kneeling in front of me. Okay, all done. You should wash it up with soap later, too. You're really lucky that string missed your eye. You can't imagine how terribly sorry I am, Garvin. It's okay, it's not your fault. By the way, how often does this happen? I never thought that playing guitar might be such a dangerous activity. Almost never, unless the guitarist attempts to do some wild soloing, then the highest string can sometimes break. It's my fault for playing in a weird tuning. I must have tuned the string too high, and it couldn't withstand the tension. I think I'll go back to playing in standard tuning for now, for a while now. Get some, get some, uh, get some higher tensile strength, uh, string. You have no idea how much this frightened me. At least I've heard you play. The song sounded quite nice. Ha! <laughs> You're only saying that to make me feel better. <laughs> but thank you anyway. Too bad you won't be able to play again now on this trip. Oh, I have a spare set of strings, don't worry. I always have one with me in the guitar bag. Strings wear out very quickly, so I change them every month or so, whenever they get dull or rusty. Where did you get the hydrogen peroxide from? I borrowed it from Devin. I will drop by his room later to return it. I told him I just needed it for a moment. Mm. Yeah, baby. Don't bother, you've done a lot for me already. I'll go and return it myself. Okay, if you want to. It's no problem for me, though. You're really kind, but I don't want to be a bother. You know well that you're not a bother, Carvin. He hands me the bottle and leaves the room with me. One second, guys. I'll go to the common space now. You can join me there later if you want. Mm-hmm, sure. See you later. Hell yeah! What a panther daddy. Garvin. Good to see you again. Hi, Devin. I'm just returning the hydrogen peroxide that Rune borrowed. So Rune fetched the hydrogen peroxide for you. He didn't tell me anything, just asked for it and left. Did something happen to you? Nothing, just a scratch from a snap string. Devin nods, observing me closely. Okay... Thanks for returning it. You didn't have to bring it back immediately. Frankly, hydrogen peroxide isn't the best thing for disinfecting wounds. Just water with soap is enough. I just happened to have it in my first aid kit. Huh. Why did Rune use it, then? Maybe he wanted to make sure that I actually disinfected it instead of brushing it off? That sounds possible. No problem. I was passing by anyway. See you later, then. See ya. That's it! What? Oh, hell yeah. Some boy time. Boy time all the time. Looks like there's no one here. I decided to check out the locker room to see if anyone was in the swimming pool of the sauna, but it doesn't look like it. Where's everyone? Let me see, who's there? The lockers are all open, but maybe I shouldn't just shouldn't assume that it means they're all empty. I take off my shoes and walk further into the locker room. Inside one of the lockers is a familiar hoodie, covering covering some other clothes and belongings. Bingo! Now where am I? Oh, okay. Never mind. We're gonna... There you go. Okay. So that's uh, Bjorn's path. So I'll save that for the... Save that for what I'm doing him. Or when he's doing me. Whatever. No! Ah! 
Naughty thoughts. Terrible thoughts. Unchristian. <laughs> For a moment, I think about going to the sauna alone just to relax, but frankly, I'm already plenty relaxed. Just bored. Rune told me that he would be in the common space, so that's where I direct my next steps. There's a faint melody coming from somewhere. I stop for a moment and listen. It sounds like a piano, only muffled. Oh yeah, now I remember there was a piano in the common space. I continue walking towards that room. The closer I am to it, the louder the music gets. Walking into the common space, I see it's Miko sitting behind the piano. He notices me entering the room and stops playing, turning towards me. Carvin! Did you know they have a piano here? Yeah, I've been here a few times already. I didn't pay much attention to it, not knowing how to play piano myself. It's even in tune! I was afraid that it was here only for decoration, but someone is taking care of it. He touches the keyboard with such affection that for a moment I can't help but feel envious of it. Mm-hmm. That's good. I remember you always liked playing piano. That's right. I haven't seen one in a long time. Remember the one we had at our school? Oh, yeah. This one looks better for sure. There wasn't anything wrong with that one. It was just old. Still, it was so much fun. I sit down on the sofa, feeling somewhat awkward sitting in the middle of the room. I was always pretty bad at playing piano, so I don't really share the sentiment. Oh, but I remember staying with you after classes and listening to you play. It brings back some memories, doesn't it? It does indeed. Why did you stop playing? Rune and Bjorn suddenly emerge from the corridor, walking alongside each other. Bjorn holds, holds some book in his paw, but from here I can't read the title. Miko? And Carvin? Hello. Hi, Rune. Hey, Bjorn. I had no idea you could play piano too, Miko. Knowing your way around the keyboard helps a lot with composing. I actually started with the piano, and switched back to electronic instruments later. We heard someone playing the piano in here and came to listen. I hope you don't mind an audience. I don't, although don't expect too much from me. I haven't played a real acoustic thing in a long time. Rune walks into the room and sits down on an armchair. Bjorn, however, walks up to me and points at the spot next to me on the sofa. Hey, you don't mind if I sit here? No, no, don't worry. He sits down heavily next to me and leans forward with elbows on his knees, resting his chin on his paws. I can hear the wooden construction of the sofa creak under our combined weight. Um, so, would you like me to play something? Sure. Hmm, maybe this one. Miko turns toward the piano and lifts both his canine paws, wiggling his, fing wiggling his fingers for a moment before putting them down on the keyboard. Everyone goes silent in an instant, leaving only the crackling from the fireplace resounding in the room. Miko begins playing the piece, soft piano notes reverberating around the room. He strokes the keys gently, but with confidence. The three of us sit in silence, not wanting to distract him, but also enchanted by the music. I don't think he would notice anything anyway, completely engrossed in playing. There's a genuine smile on his muzzle, and he closes his eyes from time to time, his tail swaying from side to side with the rhythm of the piece. It's like he's playing with his whole body, not just his paws. One second, guys. <clears throat> the piece he's playing is delicate and calm, like a meadow brushed by a gentle autumn breeze. It makes me feel like I'm floating above the ground, or being carried away by a gentle stream. It's touching, it's touching something deep within me that I haven't felt for a long time. His paws move elegantly in wide swipes across the keys. It takes some effort, and he has to slow down in some parts, but from the look on his snout, it's clear that he's having a lot of fun. He looks really happy when he plays. Yeah, I remember that from the times we were in middle school together. The only times when he looked genuinely happy was when he was playing an instrument. Right now, in his smile, I can see the boy he was back then, getting lost in music and forgetting about the world around him. Suddenly I hear steps somewhere behind me. Turning around, I see Torolf entering the room, holding a banana in his paw. He raises his other paw to greet us, but doesn't say anything. Instead, he walks up to the free armchair and sits down quietly, listening to Miko playing. His steps feel deliberate and balanced. I hadn't noticed it before, but he walks in a really elegant way. Meanwhile, Miko finishes playing the piece. <laughs> that was really nice, Miko. Miko turns toward him, surprised. Hi, did we meet before? I believe not. Lake mentioned you in a conversation, though. I know you're Carvin's friend. My name is Torolf. 
It's a pleasure to meet you. <laughs> a pleasure for me as well. Yeah, that was something, Miko. Oh, thanks. Even if you're saying that only out of courtesy. I can't help but envy him. I myself struggled with playing anything on piano, and there wasn't any fun in it for me. When I was listening to him play, I always felt inadequate. He started a bit earlier than me, and that was enough to discourage me. Miko used to tell me that I just lacked the resolve to push through the first phase when playing anything in, when playing anything is a huge effort. But for me, it seemed like I would never get out of this phase. The truth is, I never applied myself while Miko kept practicing and practicing. And there's the alarm. Alright guys, I'm going to save it right there. Thank you for watching another Let's Play episode of Dawn Course Devin's Path. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring the notification bell for the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!